In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use the Moonstone Photoshop action. So, looking at this photo here, uh, I use the action to create this effect. And a few other examples I have here is using the same image, I just customized it a bit uh, and I created this. Also, went from this to this. From this to this. Okay, so let me close these down and start off with my photo. So there's a few things we need to check before uh, we load up the action and click play. Uh, first things first, you need to uh, set your photo layer as the background. So it should look like this. Uh, it should have the background text or lock symbol. So if you don't, if you open up your photo and it doesn't look like that, just go to layer, new background from layer, and it sets it as a background. Now, still in the layer panel, head on up to this top right hand corner icon, go to panel options, and just down the bottom here, just make sure add copy to copy layers and groups selected. Click OK. Uh, next, go to the image mode, uh, sorry, image menu, go to mode, and just check RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. And lastly, just make sure you're using you know, a good resolution. Uh, Photo. So this one here, I've got 1600 by 2500, 300 dpi. Uh, I would try to stick away um, with using photos under a thousand pixels because the the effects, the quality effects, seems to diminish uh, the lower the lower you go under a thousand pixels. So this is a good size, anywhere from about 1500 to 3000 pixels is good. Okay, so I'll cancel that. So the first thing we need to do is create a new layer. Okay, and it needs to be called brush. It must be all lowercase, otherwise the action won't work. So click OK. So with the brush layer selected, I'm just going to hit B on the keyboard to get my brush out. So I'm going to right click to bring up my brushes. And now I'm just going to select a, I've just got a soft brush here. And you can pick any color, doesn't matter. And so what you want to do is start brushing over your photo. Oops, brushing over your photo where we want to concentrate all the effects around. So let me just make this a bit quicker and open up uh, one that I've already... So in this Photoshop file here, I've already uh, created my brush layer and I have brushed around uh, the edges of my subject. Uh, you don't need to make it this perfect. Uh, the edges, you can see, are nice and clean. You don't need to uh, yeah, make it that perfect. They can be a bit rigid, a bit rugged. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so with that done, we now need to load up the action. So we go to the window menu, uh, go to actions, and the actions panel will pop up. Go to this top icon and go to load actions, and then select the moonstone to A10 file. And here it is here. So just select, so it's 12 open the folder, select the moonstone action, and all we need to do then is click play. So this action runs around three to four minutes so just click play on the action and come back to Photoshop in a few minutes time uh, I'm just going to fast forward this video to get to the result and then I'm just going to go through every single layer and talk about uh, all the ways we can customize the look uh, of this okay so the action's finished and you can see here we have our default uh, look so what I'm going to do now is firstly minimize this actions panel so click on that little arrow up there to minimize that. And we're going to head into the layer panel here and go through all these and talk about what they all do. So the very first thing you want to do uh, after the action is complete is with the folder that's already selected, hold down Control Alt and just click on that arrow. And what it will do, it just, it just collapses all the folders. So this way it's just neatened up everything uh, because for some reason when an action's finished, playing it expands all the folders which is a little annoying but uh, that's a quick tip to collapse them all. Okay so up the top here we have our brush layer uh, still hanging around so if you wanted to run the action again just shift select these layers delete and you run the action again so even if you run the action again with the same brush layer you're going to get a slightly different <coughs> excuse me a slightly different result all these sort of colored twirls would be uh, more randomized so you can play around uh, with running the action multiple times. Next one down is add sharpen. If you just turn the one on, uh, it might be hard to see but it just adds a little bit of overall sharpening to all the elements. So if you're happy with the default look 
just flick that one on to add a bit more sharpening but if you want to move around all the layers and uh, yeah, ma uh, mess around a bit I recommend sharpening afterwards so we'll leave that one off so this one here matte shine if I t flick this on and off you can see that it adds a little bit of um, yeah a matte shine over the entire design so if you want to mess around with that you can double click on this layer go to gradient overlay and just mess around with the angle here and you can adjust the scale to make that bit of shine a bit thinner so we'll just keep it at that okay so this folder here color we go inside here and we can mess around with you know the contrast the brightness and there's 10 different color variations uh, we can play around with so the top one here overall saturation if you double click on this you can see that the uh, the overall saturation of the image has been increased a bit so I bring it up down you can see you can see that so if you want to have the colors a bit more saturated just increase this so I think for this image we'll, we'll bring it up a bit higher uh, about there okay now overall brightness so if you double click on this one you can play around with these handles here to make it darker and on this one here to make it lighter so uh, I like to use this one just to make tiny little adjustments to just like that okay uh, overall contrast so this one you use the opacity handle here so the default opacity is 10% so if I just click and drag on this word opacity to the right 100% so that's way too much contrast to the left zero so it's very sensitive this layer so just drag it up a little bit I'm going to keep it about 16%. Looks good. Uh, this one here, if you want to keep the original colors of your photo, so if I just flick this one on, you'll see that all we have now is the original colors of our photo. Uh, I'll just turn this to normal. You can see all the colors there. If you turn that blend mode to color, it um, fills our image with those original colors. So that's a handy layer to use if you want to keep the original colors. So these folders here, the way these work is all you need to do is turn the visibility on for them. So you can go down the line here, flick them on to get a feel for which one might suit uh, your photo. So this one, I might go with this one. And what you can also do is adjust the opacity of these folders. So if that effect's too strong, you can just lower the opacity down a bit. Just like that. So I'm just clicking on this word opacity again. So it's zero, 100. Um, so I'll just bring that up to about there and you can also blend different folders together so you can just flick on another one that was too strong like this and bring that passive back down to zero and you know bring it up a little so you can blend the colors together so you can create your own uh, color looks okay so that's the color options there so let's go down into the moonstone folder so if I flick this folder off this house this house is pretty much everything so let's go inside and we're going to go through all these so the top folder here is glows over photos so if I flick this folder on and off uh, these glows tend to cut in to the area that we brushed so into the subject so you can see the glow cuts over a hand a little bit there a little bit here uh, so what I like to do is um, just flick these folders on and off as you're going down to get a feel for what they do as well and you know you don't have to use all these folders uh, you might find that you know if I turn this one off that it looks better without those glows uh, you know other things you can do as well if I select this folder and you right click and go duplicate group if I do that it's made the glows much brighter but you know you can play around with the opacity of this folder so if I drag the opacity to zero I can start bringing it up just a little bit so you can just boost the brightness of some of those effects so I'm just going to delete that so inside this glows folder we've got two different layers here so glow 2 uh, you can see you can move that around so you can offset the glows a little bit uh, you can also double click on these adjustment layers mess around with the color and the saturation you can see that there and another thing to note is on all these folders you can see that they have a folder mask, these white boxes. So 
what these do, so say for example, if I, if I duplicate this folder again, if I hit hold down control J to duplicate it, uh, you can see we've boosted brightness, but say for example, I only want uh, this area to the right to be really bright, so what I can do, if I grab a black brush and start brushing in here, I can erase uh, some of those glows, so you can see I didn't want the glows over this corner, so I brush black, but if you brush white, you can bring it back. So I can brush a bit more glow in there, uh, black, raise that area. So you can do that with all these folders, you can sort of go down the line and brush away little areas you don't want, but we'll get into that uh, as I go along a bit here. So we'll keep that. So angular lines, if I flick this one on and off, you can see that it overlays these rigid lines, very subtle, over our subject. So it just adds a little bit of detail. Uh, there's just two layers here that you could you can move around if you want. Uh, also the opacity of these layers are quite low, so this is 40%. So if I turn this up to 100 you can see, see the lines more prominent there. And again use the folder mask if you don't want it to appear in certain areas. So you know I don't want it to appear over a face so I'll just brush black into that area and they're gone over a face. Okay. Going down, we have our photo folder. So if I turn this one on and off, you can see it hides the area that we brushed. So you can see there's our brushed area and it hides it all. And it reveals um, all the effects underneath, which is pretty cool. But I'll show you what we can also do by flicking off uh, the photo layer. So going inside here, we have a layer called photo sharpening. So this just adds a little bit of contrast and a little bit of yeah, sharpening to your image, so you can flick that one on and off. Here you can uh, play around with the color of your photo, so just double click on that, play with these handles. You can make subtle changes to the color. Um, I'm just going to mess around a little bit here. The highlights, I'm going to try red. No. Yellow. You know, something like that. Uh, and change photo brightness, so if you double click on this, again you can play around with these handles to um, change the brightness. Oops, I think a little bit darker, a little bit brighter. So the idea is to match your photo with all the ele all the, sorry, all the elements around uh, your photo, so it's all seamless. Okay, so this one here is the main photo, so you can flick that one on and off, and see that that's that's the big one. So um, what I like to do as soon as the action's finished, I'll jump into this folder, into the photo folder down the bottom. And what I do like to do is just flick this one on and off. We can see um, some cool, you know, glow glowing spots and you know light streaks that appear underneath. But if I flick this on, it's kind of hidden. So what I what you can do if you select this mask and grab a uh, black brush. You can start brushing away areas of your photo. So see that I can, I can blend uh, my photo now better with the background. So I can go around the edges here. I can brush away her torso there. Um, you know, her hand here. So it's like transparent. Um, and what I like to do is keep flicking this on and off. To sh it kind of shows you where some really cool effects are hidden. So I like this bit of glow here with the blue light streaks coming in. So I'll try to brush that away a bit more, and down through here. So just pay a bit of uh, attention to the details hidden underneath and what, so around his, her hair here, just some light. And you brush white to essentially undo or brush back in some detail that um, you want. Anyway, you get the point. So, get in the habit of you know jumping straight into that layer and brushing away some of your edges, blending your photo with the background details more, because that's where the the really cool effects uh, are hidden away. So, that's that. Now, this layer below of highlighted orange, it's a quick way to randomize all the colors of your photo. So, if you double click on this and just drag this hue slider around, you can see that you can randomize um, all the colors, which is pretty cool. So, 
Uh, what I like to do, yeah, is just scrub through this, and you might uh, let's have a look. I actually think the default colors are pretty good. You can adjust the saturation again, but I think we've got enough. And what you can also do is, if you want to apply just one color, hit this one here, colorize. And now what you can do is again play with that saturation, but drag the slider again, and now we have just. Uh, one color. So if that's what you're going for, just remember that little checkbox there, colorize. Okay, so going on down, by default this one's turned off. If you flick it on, uh, it just adds a little bit of random black lines here and there. So you might like that, might not. It's there, uh, but it's off by default. Large broken up parts. So if I turn this one on and off, you can see that uh, there's bits of parts that are cut out from your photo and just flown around, they're blurred out to make it look like it's uh, closer to the camera. Uh, so if we go inside here, there's two, fold, uh, two layers. So this one here, I'll move this one around. See that? Don't forget, you can, if I hold down, just hit Control T. So I can rotate this, you can scale it. Uh, hit Control J to duplicate it, uh, make copies. Um, okay, so this one below Broken Part 2, by default it's turned off. If you turn that on, uh, it's it's basically the same as Parts 1, but it's just white. They're just white parts, so uh, I'll just put that one there. Might not need it. No, don't need it. So this one here, dots. I'll turn this one on and off. Pretty self-explanatory. Uh, again, like I said, if you don't want some of these effects, just turn their folders off. Uh, so if we go inside here, we have small dots. I'll move this one around. See those? Uh, if you want more of them, just hit Control J or another way to duplicate a layer. If I just hold down Alt on this layer and click and drag up, I'm just made a copy, so I can then move that, you know, up there. I can hold down Alt again, click and drag. And rotate it for a bit more variation. Uh, okay, so this layer here, dots cloud, if I turn that one on and off, that essentially, uh, wherever there's a cluster of stars, or dots we'll just call them, um, it creates a cloud around that area. So just for some atmospheric effects, uh, if you want that to be more prominent, duplicate it, just like that. But we'll keep that just like that. I might just delete those two, probably a bit too much. So large dots, they're the most prominent ones. Uh, again, you can duplicate them to create more. Okay, so going on down, we have speed lines. Now, what you'll want to do with these, if you go inside, uh, you've got these two layers here. So what you want to do with these is just basically move them into place, or uh, yeah, move them where you want. So I like to look at the general uh, flow of the image, like. For example, I'll rotate this one so it looks like you know she's shooting down from this angle here. Uh, and again, I've got another one here. You can see that's on a different angle. But if I hold down Control T, I can rotate that. Uh, I might just scale it down a bit, and I'll move that out here with the direction of her her arm there. And what I can also do is create a copy, I might create a copy of number one, and I'll move it down here. And I might just flip it horizontal. Uh, so if you go to edit menu, transform, flip uh, horizontal. I might just rotate it on this angle, control T to scale. Something like that. And if you want to, uh, say for example, these top ones here to be a bit more prominent, just duplicate it where it is, and it will boost the brightness of it. Okay, so that's the speed lines. Glows under photo, these are just more glows. So again, uh, flick it on and off, and if you feel that it, your photo suits it without it, just leave it off. If you go inside, uh, again, just two layers, and you can use the adjustment layers here to, uh, to recolor the glows. Uh, glowing edge highlight. So if I turn this one on, 
What that will do is highlight all the edges of your photo uh, with this white glowing line. So say if you brush away like I did all her feet, uh, you can bring back some of that detail, that definition by turning that one on. And again, if you just want to appear in some areas, uh, so say if I only want to appear on her jeans and her shoes, I can brush black into the mask to remove it everywhere else but that area. Okay, so this one here, Goo, uh, by default it's turned off. So if you turn the one on, it just adds a little bit of, uh, yeah, just random black, uh, like a liquid effect that you can move around. Uh, you can scale it up. So it's there just to experiment with. You might like the effect, you might not, uh, but it's there. If you want to change the color, you can just double click on this layer. Go to color overlay and just pick a different color. Okay, so cancel that. So large, these two folders here, large wavy glue lines and small wavy glue lines. So I'll turn these two off. Turn them back on. You can see it those, it's all those uh, glowing lines around our subject. Might just turn the goo off. So you can see that folder there. That folder there. So uh, again, if you go inside these folders, there's some coloring options, and you can duplicate the layer to uh, create more effects. It's probably a bit too strong. So I'll leave that one off. Okay. So going on down here, we have this folder by default. It's off called Abstract Texture. If I turn that one on, you'll see that we have just more effects that we can add to the design. So I'll just turn this bottom one off. So I've got this one here, abstract texture. I'll move out the side so you can see. So it creates this white uh, wavy effect that looks kind of cool if you just you know move it around and uh, overlay it in certain areas. Uh, I think that looks pretty cool where it is. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, abstract texture exploded. It's the same texture, uh, but it's just broken up a bit. So uh, this isn't the best best example of this photo, but generally it's more scattered around uh, our photo, but what you can do, you know, you can just uh, scale that up. Just to make it look like it's, you know, broken up from our image and it's shooting out a bit. But we'll just turn the one off. Uh, this folder here, blurred diagonal lines, uh, if I turn that one on and off, you can see it just adds those uh, lines everywhere. So you can go inside here and just manually move these around uh, they're really just for atmospheric effects, but um, I might just rotate that one down like that. Something like that. Okay, that's that folder. Random line detail. If I turn that one on, just add some really subtle uh, random lines around the edges of our photo. Uh, so you can tick that one on if you want it. Soft background texture, this is very subtle. This it just sits in the background there and uh, has some subtle cloud effects. So you can turn that one on and off. Uh, the background color layer, if you double click on this, you can uh, simply change the color of the background. Okay, so for this one I'm just going to keep it uh, black. And if you want to, say, export uh, this image with a transparent background, just flick these two off. And the entire design then is on a transparent background. So you can save that out as a PNG and then drag and drop that onto uh, another design. Okay. So uh, lastly, I'll go back up to add sharpening. So, uh, and yeah, and you can see that's just added. It's very subtle, but it's just sharpened up our subject there. And so that's it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please email me and I'll help you out. If not, have fun using the action. Thanks.